chance to create our first ever national road trip for all college bound teens and their parents in partnership with our friends at Forefront Baltimore. So like so many of you, our family had planned on spending our spring and our summer visiting colleges. Um, we have two rising seniors, but when those plans were canceled, my colleagues and I Jump Spark, started to reach out to schools to see if they'd be interested in participating in virtual tours um, through a Jewish lens. And I'm thrilled to say that they were more than enthusiastic to participate and that we're bringing you 33 college info sessions in the month of June. We've already featured info sessions for Tulane, Miami, American, Georgia Tech, Brandeis and Duke, as well as helpful workshops and webinars to help you get through the college admissions experience. Did you miss, miss a session? No worries. They're all being recorded and you can find them on our YouTube channel through our website, which is roadtriptocollege.org. I wanna thank our amazing virtual bus driver for UF, Alyssa Goldman, for her super cool and informative posts on our social media today. You killed it. Um, so follow us on social media at JumpSparkATL and our website, roadtriptocollege.org to sign up for more sessions and to create your own personal road trip. So we are extremely excited to feature the University of Florida today. Our panelists representing UF are from admissions, Theos Rizos, from Hillel, Maria Slade, and Rabbi Jonah Zinn. And we have um, three awesome students, Jake Rubin, Elena Bruckner, and Alana Sachs. Um, so as our panelists are presenting, please feel free to enter your, your questions in the Q&A box at the bottom. And we're gonna leave plenty of time to answer your questions during the second half of this webinar. So without further ado, I'm going to hand it off to Theos. All right. Good evening, everyone. I'm going to go ahead and get started. So my name is Theos Rizos, and I'm a freshman admissions officer at the University of Florida. I graduated from the University of Florida in 2014, taught in the school system in Jacksonville, Florida for a couple of years. And I've been working in admissions for the past four years. Basically, my role in admissions, I read applications, I travel to different areas. And I will be covering the Atlanta territory as well as Chicago in the upcoming year. Um, so today I'm just going to give you all some information about the University of Florida in general, the application process, and then we're going to have time um, at the end. You're going to hear from some excellent student leaders we have on the panel. And I want to thank JumpSpark for the opportunity also to include us in this college tour. So first off, the University of Florida is ranked number seven for public universities across the country, um, which is a huge milestone. So when you attend the University of Florida, you're attending a top 10 public institution. Upon reaching rank number seven, the president of the university, um, Dr. Fox has set the goal to uh, basically jump into the top five. So it's an institution that doesn't stay content with where it's currently at. It's constantly striving to improve in the rankings. The University of Florida has over 200 um, different options for degree programs. There's over 120 undergraduate majors that a student can choose from. And there's different professional programs ranging from a medical school, veterinary school, dental school, pharmacy school, um, and there's all different types of opportunities. So if you're looking to become a physician's assistant, we have programs in that. We have programs ranging from criminology to 16 different engineering majors. Essentially, there's something for everyone, regardless of what you're looking to study at the University of Florida. Um, in addition to that, with it being a top 10 institution, also it's renowned in terms of research. So faculty definitely emphasize research. I'm gonna talk a little bit about that a little bit later, but regardless of what you're planning on studying, whether it's something STEM related or not, students have the opportunity to research with faculty members and to participate that as early as freshman year. So I'm gonna go ahead and talk about the application process. The first thing you need to know is that you can access the University of Florida's application through the Common App or the Coalition application. If you visit the admissions website, you'll be able to get links directly to those um, platforms. Basically, the application opens up in the middle of August. That's when you can start your application. The priority deadline is November 1st, and that's incredibly important for University of Florida's application process. So while it is possible to apply after November 1st, anyone who applies after is seen on a space-by-space -space basis. Um, historically, with admissions being highly selective at the University of Florida, um, you definitely wanna make sure you apply by November 1st, and that's just submitting your application. So you can apply through the Common App or the Coalition application. Um, the second deadline that you need to be aware of is that December 1st, there's something due called the Student Self-Reported Academic Record. 
which is actually required by a lot of different public universities in Florida. So basically, December 1st, there's a deadline where you'll be entering in your coursework throughout high school, from freshman year through senior year. And you're gonna be self-reporting all of your classes, your academic courses, and that's actually how we'll be recalculating your GPA. And I'll talk about that a little bit later. December 15th is another important deadline. Um, that's when your standardized test scores are due, whether it's the SAT or the ACT. For upcoming seniors, uh, incoming seniors, we do understand that with COVID-19, um, certainly that's definitely changed the access for standardized testing. The state university system has discussed going uh, test optional and that's something that they're continually discussing. As of now, there hasn't been changes to our admissions process for that deadline, but if there are changes, you can certainly see that information on our website. If you meet this timeline, you're basically gonna hear back the last Friday in February, and that's when we release our admissions decisions. Uh, students who are interested in the honors program can apply in the front end. So basically, when you are completing your application, there's gonna be an option to write a supplemental essay where you'll be able to indicate interest in the honors program by completing that. And that's basically the admissions timeline in a nutshell, uh, with the application becoming available in the middle of August, uh, November 1st being a priority deadline, which is highly recommended. Um, it's recommended for a variety of reasons. Most students who are admitted apply by November 1st. So certainly if you wanna maximize your chances with the acceptance rate being highly selective, you won't apply by November 1st. So just to give you all a sense as far as what the numbers typically look like, we had just under 50,000 applications this past cycle. Uh, we accepted about 14,000 of those 50,000 students who applied. Um, so looking at that, that 14,000, it typically tends to be about one third of applicants. All right, I wanna go ahead and talk about the admissions review process. So basically in the review process, we're gonna be reviewing applicants and we're, we're kind of looking at a, a variety of things. We wanna see the whole picture. We're looking at students holistically. So with that, we're looking at the academic component and we're also looking at the holistic component, everything else outside of the classroom. Um, certainly I know that many of you might be in a variety of grades. Some of you might be freshmen, some of you might be incoming seniors and some of you may even be middle school or younger. Um, so definitely what I would recommend is First off, you wanna take the most rigorous curriculum available at your high school. In our admissions process, we understand that the curriculum is gonna differ from area to area, from school to school. So we get applicants from public schools, private schools, Christian schools, Jewish schools. We get applicants from students who are in urban areas, rural areas. We understand that the opportunities are going to differ. So definitely I would recommend whatever's available at your school. If your school offers AP courses, IB courses, ACE courses, or dual enrollment, courses, you want to make sure you're taking those uh, challenging college level classes and taking as many as you comfortably can. And that's advice that I would give to students who are looking to apply to selective universities in general. You want to make sure that you're taking those rigorous courses. Uh, so that's the first thing I would recommend when it comes to academics. We're going to be evaluating students based off of the rigorous courses that they've taken. We are looking at the strength of their schedule all four years, including the senior year schedule, which is incredibly important. So Definitely taking rigorous courses is important throughout high school, but junior and senior year are years that are very much focused on as well. Um, so definitely you wanna make sure you keep that up. When it comes to GPA, what we're actually gonna do in our process is we're gonna be recalculating students' GPAs. So how that works is basically it's on a 4.0 scale and any honors classes get an extra 0.5, AP classes get an extra one point weight, IB classes, ACE classes, and dual enrollment classes. So if it's a college level course, it receives an extra one point weight. Um, so basically how that works is if you get an A in one of those classes, it counts as a 5.0, which makes it a super A. So in the admissions process, with our middle 50% being uh, typically about a 4.4 to 4.6 for the in incoming class weighted, um, you definitely want to make sure you're taking those rigorous classes because it gives you the opportunity to attain a higher GPA. Now with that middle 50%, that just means that about half of students fall within that range. There are certainly students who might have a slightly lower GPA or a higher GPA. And there isn't um, a cutoff in that process. So we're looking at everything. We're basically looking at the academics and then the holistics. Um, when it comes to the ACT or SAT, we do super score both standardized tests. Um, you can take those tests as many times as you're able to. There's students who take it two times, there's students who take it five times. Um, there's not a preference among either tests. So we have students that might prefer one over the other. Um, certainly I recommend personally, that students take both tests at least one time so they can try to figure out which test they tend to prefer. But definitely, we will super score the score for either test. Um, so that's another important part as far as the academic review. 
I do want to emphasize too that um, when it comes to the evaluation process academically, um, while the vast majority of our applicants are in state, we do have about 13% of our freshman class that comes from out of state, international students as well. So we do have a significant population that are outside of Florida. When it comes to the holistic section of the review process, we're going to be evaluating students on every other nuance that makes you who you are. So basically, we don't offer interviews in our admissions process, but the way for you to basically interview is to tell us about yourself in your essay. So with the essay, there's a variety of different prompts. Um, you can choose from what's the most challenging part of being a teenager. You can talk about a challenge or obstacle, something you're proud about. There are sample prompts that are available on the Common App and the Coalition App. Um, so if you look at those essay prompts, we're gonna be using those exact same essay prompts. So in theory, you could technically write your essay. If you're an incoming senior, you could write your essay now and it's gonna be the same essay prompt this upcoming year. Um, even juniors or sophomores or freshmen, um, we basically use the same essay prompts and we always tend to have a prompt where you can write on a topic of your choice. So with that, you can use one of the suggested prompts or you can choose your own topic. Uh, when it comes to the essay, as far as tips, typically what I recommend is that you really wanna convey who you are as an individual um, why you can contribute to, or how you can contribute to our campus or community. And, and with that, you can definitely write on any topic. We've seen students write on something they're proud about, an aspiration, an idea that they have for the future. Uh, we've seen a student write an essay on how their desk grew with them. So certainly creativity is something that is, is possible as well. So definitely feel free to be creative in your essay. It basically is your opportunity to let an admissions officer know who you are and some other nuances that are kind of outside of the whole um, objective portions and such as grades and GPAs, um, you know, and test scores. So the essay is a really important factor in kind of helping differentiate yourself among applicants. When it comes to the resume, there is an extracurricular section in the application. And basically from there, you will be able to include all extracurricular activities in high school. And those can be school clubs, but those can also be outside organizations as well, including places of worship. So when it comes to extracurricular activities, um, example that I like to give is you really wanna detail everything as much as possible within a space that's permitted. So for example, when it's a club or activity, try to highlight any leadership positions, highlight any awards or accolades, achievements, try to really convey what you've accomplished in that activity. How did you contribute to your school? How did you contribute to your community? So when it comes to that part of the application process, um, some students might do the bullet point format, some might do the sentence format. I think the most important thing is that you definitely um, go into detail about what you've uh, been involved in, what you've accomplished. Continuity and passion is definitely a plus. Um, so we prefer to see students that are involved in the same activities and progress over the years, as opposed to students being involved in maybe 10 or 15 activities and, and maybe a member of each club. So that's, that's kind of the general advice that I would give for that portion of the application process. Um, but definitely that can be a differentiating factor as well. Next, I wanna kind of talk about the different pathways to becoming a student. So basically the, there's three main pathways um, traditionally. So students can start traditionally during the summer term or the fall term. Um, it does not influence your chances of being admitted if you preference one term over the other. So about one third of our freshman class typically starts during the summer B term and about two thirds start during the fall term. It is possible that a student could preference one term and be offered admission for a different term. Um, so that's a traditional process. And when it comes to that, um, certainly students can indicate that on the application. The second way to being admitted is a program called the Innovation Academy. The Innovation Academy is basically a very unique program offered at the University of Florida where students can take classes and earn a minor in innovation. That program essentially encompasses students taking courses on a unique calendar year, students take classes on a spring and summer schedule, and all the students in that program, in addition to their major, they also earn a minor in innovation. It's basically an entrepreneurship minor where they're learning lots of different skills such as uh, strategic thinking, basically how to develop innovative ideas. Um, it's definitely a program for someone who might consider themselves an innovator, maybe someone an entrepreneur. Um, and that program has about 36 different majors offered. In addition to that, another pathway is something called the PACE program where basically students um, you can't apply for this program, but any admissions process, in the event that we're not able to admit students for the summer term or fall term, uh, we've also considered students for the PACE program, which is kind of a, a unique pathway program where students might start online and then they complete their degree on campus. So students in the PACE program basically have the option of about 60 different majors and they can start online. It's typically about 
two years to complete the program. If you are coming in with AP credit, IB credit, or ACE credit, those definitely count towards that program as well. Um, in that program, some students might be able to complete the program sooner, sometimes as soon as one year. And then basically they transition and complete the last 60 credit hours on campus. Students in PACE can move to Gainesville. They can be involved in clubs, activities, including Greek life, student organizations, and things of that nature as well. And those are the main pathway programs that students can apply for and, and basically be considered for admission. So some of you might be thinking, why UF? And I kind of talked a little bit about how UF is ranked number seven, top 10 public university in the country. Um, there's many different nuances. UF is also um, ranked a best value college, ranked number two by Kiplinger. There's a variety of reasons, but I think the main reason that you should consider the University of Florida is that it's always striving to be better. So in terms of research, obviously University of Florida is known for athletics, but it's also known as a research institution. And some examples of that include that recently the University of Florida, um, some developers have been working on creating um, basically a new uh, COVID-19 test. They've also been looking at a low cost ventilator. So they're constantly looking at developing new ideas that can help shift the world. I wanna talk about credibility. So we talked about the ranking that University of Florida offers, but definitely in terms of the price point, um, about 67% of students graduate without student loan debt. So students are earning a top tier degree at a very, very affordable price. Um, so that's one of the main reasons why students consider University of Florida credible. Um, when they travel to different locations, even internationally, the University of Florida name carries a weight. So some, some students know University of Florida from things such as creating Gatorade, um, but it's also known for definitely being a top tier academic institution and well renowned, not just in, in the Southeast region, but across the United States and internationally. In terms of affordability, um, talked about how two thirds of students graduate without student loan debt. Um, certainly you will get a top tier in, uh, education at a very affordable price. So our out of state tuition in some cases might be more affordable than some students in state tuition. So it's definitely a great value college in terms of the tuition rate, and all the resources that are available to students. Students have access to many different resources from healthcare center, counseling and wellness, various recreational facilities, clubs and activities, things of that nature, uh, access to research opportunities, shadowing opportunities, for example, um, there's SHANS, so students who are interested in the healthcare field have the opportunity to actually shadow a physician um, while they're a student. I want to talk really briefly about the different opportunities to be engaged on campus. So with student organizations, there's over a thousand clubs and activities at the University of Florida. Um, with those over a thousand clubs and activities, there's something for everyone. And I like to say that at the University of Florida, you can be involved in a lot of the same activities in high school um, if you choose. So if you're involved in Key Club, you can be involved in the Circle K Club, which is the college version of Key Club. Um, you can be involved in sports. There's intramural sports, club sports, all different opportunities to be engaged there. There's also activities such as sailing. There's a sailing team. Um, there's humans versus zombies. There's student government, which manages a multi-million dollar budget at the University of Florida. So you definitely have the opportunity to be involved in some of the same activities, but you can also kind of reinvent yourself at the University of Florida. And with that, there's so many opportunities. There's Greek organizations, which definitely um, have a huge population on campus. Um, there are community service related groups. There's pre-professional related organizations. Definitely when it comes to the college experience, uh, we strongly recommend that students are engaged in co-curricular activities because these experiences can also be very key in helping to develop students. Um, so definitely being involved in clubs and activities, they can be fun. They can help students out with networking, um, you know, meeting new friends. Um, they can even help students out in terms of um, certainly in terms of developing themselves, in terms of communication skills, in terms of diversifying their skill sets. There are different academic groups. There's groups that compete and, and debate, speech and debate, and there's also leisure groups. So whatever you're looking for, there's opportunities for kind of all of the above at the University of Florida. All right, at this point, um, that concludes basically the general presentation from that part. We'll have more time for question and answer, but I believe we're gonna be transitioning to our students who are on the call for some excellent student leaders on campus. Awesome, Theo, thank you so much. Um, yeah, so now we're gonna move on to our students and um, they are gonna take turns uh, talking about their experience at Florida. So um, why don't we start with um, Jake, uh, Jake Rubin, and then we're gonna move on to Elena Bruckner and then Ilana Sachs. So go ahead, you're on Jake. 
All right. Uh, hi, I'm Jake Rubin. I am a rising sophomore. Uh, I graduated from North Springs High School and uh, I was an undecided major for my first year, but now I'm transitioning to be a business major as well as doing a pre-med track. And I'm involved in Greek life and API and a couple other organizations around campus. Hi everyone, my name is Elena Bruckner and I am a rising senior at UF. Um, I graduated from Walton High School. Um, I am pursuing a dual degree in psychology and criminology, so I'm pretty involved with the College of Liberal Arts and Science um, and with my majors. And I am also a research assistant on campus um, in a psychology and law lab. Um, I've been involved with Dance Marathon. I volunteer at a local elementary school. I'm a part of a um, the Jewish Greek house, um, and I was actually the vice president of philanthropy um, for the chapter. Uh, I've been involved with Hillel in a few different ways through that position, but I was also part of their first Jewish leadership fellowship last semester. Um, and yeah. Hey guys, I'm Alana Sachs. I'm a rising sophomore also went to Walton High School and I'm majoring in health science on a pre-dental track. And I'm also involved in several organizations. Some of those are pre-professional. I'm also an AFI and I'm also a You Matter We Care ambassador, which is basically just a way on campus for us to students to provide resources for students, faculty, basically anybody on campus who are in distress. Awesome guys, thank you so much. Um, so we're gonna have a lot of time to, to ask Jake and Elena and Alana questions, uh, specific questions about why they chose UF and um, a lot about their experience. So, but let's go ahead and um, move on to uh, Maria Slade and Rabbi Jonah Zinn who are here from UF Hillel. Everyone. Thanks so much, Amy. It's uh, it's great to be with all of you today, um, and especially great to be with some of our great students who we've missed a tremendous amount. Um, although Elaine and I got to see each other a lot over Zoom when we were doing the Jewish Learning Fellowship in the uh, in the spring, um, you know, Theo, when Theos was talking, he 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 spoke about how you know UF is a um, an institution where the opportunities are virtually endless, um, and the same can be said for Jewish life. UF is home to one of the largest Jewish student populations in the country, um, and that affords us a diversity of opportunity that is virtually unparalleled. Um, if there's something that a Jewish student cares about, there are other Jewish students who care about the same things. Um, and part of our job as, a, as Jewish leaders is to help make those, uh, make those connections. Um, so Jewish, Jewish life takes lots and lots of different forms at UF. Um, a big part of it is, is Jewish Greek life, um, whether it's uh, traditionally uh, and predominantly Jewish houses like AAPI and AFI, um, like TEP and, um, and DEEF um, or ZBT, all of which have chapters at the University of Florida, or whether it's uh, non-Jewish houses um, that have significant numbers of Jewish students, or um, in some cases, non-Jewish houses that have only a handful of Jewish students, but where Jewish students tend to gravitate towards one another. Um, and Greek life's obviously, you know, it's, it came up in the question, so I wanted to make sure to address it as a big part um, of student life at, at UF, but it's also important to, to remember that it's, um, you know, it's only about 21% of the student population. And we think that Jewish students are overrepresented in, in the Greek system. So if you don't join the Greek system, there's tremendous opportunities for you to still engage in, in Jewish life and in, in um, the campus community as a whole. Um, and for Hillel, some of the ways that we do that are, are, are by trying to um, build connections between students. Sometimes those connections revolve around interests, whether it's participating in a, one of our student interest group, whether it's about arts or um, spiritual life, um, Israel, community service, you know, so many different opportunities. Some of those connections come through cohort-based programs, things like Leaders of Change, our Freshman Leadership Development Program, um, or the Jewish Learning Fellowship. Um, which is a 10-week Jewish learning program that, um, that we offer um, that we offered in, in the spring and are going to continue to offer that brings together um, students for um, around that common interest of Jewish learning um, and they stay together and these these programs last six to ten weeks depending on the program um, or whether it's a, an, an experiential program right like our birthright Israel trip um, you know, UF has one of the largest campus-based birthright Israel programs in the country um, we were we were on pace 
um, before uh, before COVID to take 250 students to Israel this year um, on, on Israel programs like Birthright. We have a, an internship program in Tel Aviv. We had um, 35 students who were ready to go um, for that program in Tel Aviv this summer that unfortunately, um, like, so, like so many summer opportunities, uh, was unable to happen. So the, the opportunities are just are, are so vast. Um, and I think more than anything, what, what we find is that students come um, to UF and they connect with Jewish community in lots of different ways, whether they connect through their Greek house or through uh, an existing social network that they had from home, whether they make friends um, at Hillel, whether they um, connect to them through a Jewish student group or on an immersive experience they take part in. And part of the role that the institutional Jewish community plays, organizations like Hillel, um, is to, um, is to help deepen that experience. So being an AFI or being an AAPI, um, and I say this as someone who was in AAPI, right, but who has, you know, I had very strong um, social Jewish connections. Um, but there's an opportunity that exists to, to, to also have um, an intellectual relationship with Judaism, a spiritual relationship with Judaism, um, a values-based experience that enables us to expand the collegian experience into other realms. And that's what Hillel does. For some students, it's social. I would say for the vast majority of students, it's not only social, but there's also a, a much deeper component to it um, that goes into those sort of those, those very varied realms of, um, of our existence. And that's part of what the collegian experience is about is about helping to develop um, students as thinkers and as thought leaders, um, but also as, um, as public servants, um, as people who have spiritual, as, as spiritual seekers, um, as community leaders. And that's part of the role that, um, you know, that, that Hillel plays in, um, in that. So, um, you know, I'm the director of Hillel. I'm, I'm about to finish my first year. I've been thrilled to, uh, we, we, have a, we have a small but mighty team of six of us, uh, for the coming year at, at UF Hillel. Um, I'm, I'm thrilled that Maria Slade is a director of Jewish Student Life is joining us as well on the call. And I, I wanna make sure she has an opportunity um, to, to add anything. Thanks Rabbi Jonah. And thank you all for being here and being excited for your Florida adventure at some point, whenever that might be. There are a lot of ways to get involved with Jewish life at UF. And the best way I can think of is either to find somebody else who's Jewish and get connected in whatever they are already involved in, or come have a conversation with us. We can help you find whatever connection you're looking for, whether that is something that doesn't already exist or something that does, we will help connect you to the right people to make that possible, make it happen, help you feel connected to a Jewish community here. Awesome, thank you guys so much. Um, that was fantastic. Now we are going to go to Q&A. And we had some questions that came in through registration that I wanted to make sure to get to. Um, some of them have already been, been answered. Um, but I would like to start with the students asking them about their transition into college. I know that a lot of um, high school students, their expectations are super high. And they think when they get to college, they're immediately just going to be you know, super happy, and, but there is a transition period. And so I would love for, for each of the students to address that and how they, um, you know, they transition. And also I think as part of this is maybe also talking a little bit about how the University of Florida helps students in um, the wellness area around, um, you know, mental health and things like that. So um, why don't we go ahead and start with, with Ilana. Yeah, um, that's actually a great question for me to answer. Um, so my freshman experience and my transition definitely went different than I expected. I guess I just thought when I got to campus, everything was gonna go perfectly, which obviously didn't happen. Um, I still had an amazing first year, but definitely faced some challenges along the way. And I still, even though that happened, I was still able to make great friends and memories, joined a bunch of organizations and still did well academically in school. Um, but some people may, when you look at the brochures and everything, um, when you tour the schools, it definitely looks different than how your freshman experience will go. But basically, there's always resources to help you. As a UMatter ambassador, I know personally that we try to help anybody, whether that's related to transitioning. And there's also the Counseling and Wellness Center, um, which can help you. It just, there's a very large incoming amount of people that try to go there as well. And Hillel's also doing 
some things that I'm a part of for mental health and wellness as well. Um, Elena, you wanna chime in? Yeah, um, I, it's been a while since I was a freshman, but I can definitely remember my transition. Um, it's tough, like I'm not gonna lie. I came to UF not wanting to really go to high school with all the kids I grew up with. And, you know, I went out of state. Um, so knowing that I wasn't gonna know anybody was pretty tough at first. Um, it took a while for me to kind of make that adjustment to kind of let it sink in that I was going somewhere where I really only knew like three or four people. Um, but I think the best advice that I got and that I would give to you all um, is to make the big campus small. I think they say that at um, orientation and I've heard it a million times, but I think it's really important to kind of find the little areas where you can make your friends, where your interests align, where, you know, if it's Hillel, if it's Greek life, if it's like a club with your major um, and, you know, find your kind of niche that helps make the big campus small, because I think having a, like a close little knit is, is really nice and helps in the transition, but everyone makes it through. It's tough. That first week is always really hard, but once you start your classes, you make friends, you you know, you're having so much fun, you're, you'll get used to it. But um, I definitely say like, stay positive. If you're going out of state, you know, just go in with that mentality that I am starting over a little bit, but it's going to be great. I'm going to learn, I'm going to grow. And then I'm going to come back with all these great new experiences. Uh, great, same. Jake. Yeah. yeah <laughs> uh, same as Elena. I only knew like a couple people coming to UF and I really wanted that. I wanted to meet new people going to college out of state now with all the same kids that I grew up with and how I made the campus smaller was at the beginning of school. I remember I didn't even know my way around campus. I didn't know anything, but me and my roommate just decided to go play pickup basketball and met a few friends and then would hang out with them for the first few weeks of school. And I'm still very close with them. And then as you start joining organizations, like if you're interested in Greek life, that's how I now have my friends that I know I'm gonna be friends with for the rest of my life. Thank you. Um, also, I wanted to ask a question around, um, that came through registration around class size. So, you know, I think that a lot of the students on this call who are in high school are deciding, do they go to a small school, a medium-sized school or a large school like UF? So um, could you, why don't we start with Jake and you can just sort of give us a sense of what size classes do you have? And then um, would love to, to hear from, from the ladies as well in terms of like, as you're moving you know, further on in your career, you know, what does that look like in terms of class size? So yeah, I obviously have only done two, one semester and a little bit more before I had to go home, but uh, I'd say my classes were pretty mixed between big lectures with could have been 300 students to smaller classrooms with only 20 or less students, depending on your classes. And some classes have uh, both. So you'd go one or two days to a big lecture and then another day to a smaller breakout classroom with a teaching assistant or something like that to be able to have a closer connection and also, if you're worried about a big class size and not having a connection with your professor, I'd really suggest wherever you end up going to office hours and sitting towards the front of the class to try and, I don't know, uh, make a connection. So, yeah. Alana, Elena, do you want to jump in? Yeah, I can. Um, so as I've kind of moved from freshman year to senior year, uh, my classes have definitely gotten smaller. Um, so when, once you're kind of more involved in your major and you're taking more specific classes and higher level classes, um, it goes down in size. I mean, I wouldn't say that it's your, you know, your high school classroom size. It's definitely always going to be a little bit bigger than that. I think the smallest class is about like 30, 40 people. But um, building on what Jake said, going to office hours is a great way to make sure that you're making a connection with your professor. That's how I um, got involved with my research. Um, so yeah, like some of the major classes that a lot of people have to take will be the big lectures, but they'll usually be a discussion, like Jake said. But as you move through, um, your classes will get smaller, I'd say. Great. Um, let's go ahead and um, talk a little bit about housing. Um, and, and we'd love for the students to talk a little bit about, you know, where they live. I mean, obviously the freshmen live in the freshman dorm, um, but, um, Elena, it'd be helpful to hear like what your trajectory was in terms of where you lived throughout your your um, your career there, 
and um, you know, had were you? How did you find your roommate? Things like that that you can comment on. So why don't we um, go ahead and start with uh, Alana? Yeah. So housing. I actually lived in Rawlings, um, which was my third choice out of Broward and Jennings. It's definitely like the perfect location, but it's definitely probably one of the oldest dorms um, on campus. But and then finding your roommate is kind of like going. I think I don't even remember what the app is called that UF like has that tells you to like match with people and stuff but basically just on like the UF official like class page it basically just has a bunch of people that go on it and just kind of find people that you're similar to um not everyone does find their perfect roommate I definitely did not find the perfect roommate we definitely had problems and everything like I'm sure everybody has problems but basically there's always resources on campus if something's not working out to help you through that as well. Elena, tell us a little bit about your, yeah. where you've lived throughout your career. Chris, um, so I started in Broward, which is I say one of the main um, freshman dorms, which is right next to Rawlings. I found my roommate through a mutual friend, um, I, like a Jewish connection. Um, I would say I had a very unique experience because I've been living with my same roommate all four years. Um, I'm living with her again next year. So I lived in the dorm with her my freshman year and then we both rushed the same sorority, A5, and I lived in the house um, for my sophomore year, which was very fun, a lot of people, but very fun. Um, and then we moved off campus to a house right near sorority row, right off campus with two other girls in my sorority. Um, so I've been living with them last year and then again next year, and I've been living with that one girl for four years. Um, we definitely, you know, butt heads a little bit, but it's been a great experience and, um, I've loved being able to, you know, share my experiences with her and get to travel through. But, you know, when you join different organizations and like Jake said, you're just meeting different people by like, you know, through your roommate, through other people in your organizations, um, I think it's really easy to find a roommate and things like that because, everyone's kind of in the same boat like nobody really wants to say it but everybody's nervous about who they're living with the next year what they're doing so I think just don't be afraid to you know make those connections all right great um okay let's talk a little bit about um there's some questions around uh, Jewish student life about Shabbat and about holidays um so would love for um Maria and, and the rabbi to answer that. And then students, if you want to chime in as well, if you've you know, participated in those programs, please do so. Sure. So yeah. we hold Shabbat services every week. We offer simultaneous, more conservative, traditional egalitarian services and a more musical reform service each week starting at six o'clock. Both of those services are led by students and they're very special, obviously, because they're led by students. And services we have for about an hour, and then everyone is invited to join us for dinner after starting at seven. Some students come for both services and for dinner. Some come for just one or the other. We also do a special dessert and sometimes an activity to go along with it at eight o'clock. So again, some students come just for that piece. Some come for all three, some pick and choose. And we hold those every week. For the holidays, we, for high holidays in particular, we hold large scale services led by Rabbi Jonah and usually a, a student who is semi-musical at least. Um, and we also have meal service for that as well. We're still figuring out our plans for the high holidays this year in regards to COVID, but have some plans in motion. Yeah, I think, look, I think if you're looking at, there's one of the beautiful things about coming to a school with such a large Jewish student population is no matter what the sort of religious experience um, you're looking for, you know, there, there are opportunities to engage in religious life in that in that way, right? So when it comes to, um, you know, Shabbat and holidays, you know, Hillel is really the, the center um, of reform conservative life. There's a very, very small Orthodox population at UF. Um, and when the population was larger, Hillel, um, 
you know, had an Orthodox minion. Now the population is is such a size that, that the only Orthodox minion in town um, is at Chabad, and it, it isn't always a minion, um, depending on the the uh, the time of year. Um, the uh, you know, but it, when, you, when it comes to sort of holidays, I think students choose to celebrate holidays in all kinds of different ways. So if you're looking for a, and you know, I'd love to hear the students, you know, perspectives on this. You know, I, I think about a holiday like, um, you know, like Purim, right, which is like one of these opportunity, you know, opportunities to celebrate in lots of different ways. So some students participate in a traditional Megillah reading. Some students participate in a baking event. Some students go to a, um, you know, a porn party at a bar, right? All of which, you know, we're helping to make happen and we're uh, supporting. Um, and there's lots in, and, and some students, by the way, like don't do anything with formal Jewish life, but instead choose to um, celebrate with their friends and make home in their apartment, right? And there's lots and lots of different ways to engage in Jewish life. And I think part of what makes UF so special is that diversity of opportunity um, that you're, that just isn't, it simply isn't available, um, you know, at every institution. Um, and it allows students to sort of engage in, in different ways at different points, depending on their needs, depending on their, um, you know, their time, you know, all the different things that sort of dynamics that, that we face in life. And, um, it creates, um, a, uh, you know, sort of a really beautiful, um, range of experience. But I'd love to hear, I don't, I mean, I'd love to hear students' perspectives on holidays on campus or Shabbat on campus to the extent that you're, you're comfortable sharing. Go. Um, I've definitely been to my fair share of Shabbats, um, the service, definitely the meals um, at Hillel. And then high holidays, I always try and make it a priority to go to services. Um, sometimes I've come home if it's been on a weekend, um, but I definitely, I've never actually participated in the service, but I've gone and I, it just makes me feel, you know, there and a part of the community. Um, and then also something really special, I think, is that at um, Alana and I's sorority house during Passover and the high holidays, we always try to make sure that there are options that we can eat. So we always have matzah and, you know, matzah pizza and all that. Um, so I think being around like a collection of Jewish and like-minded people has always been really important for me. So even if I'm not at Shabbat every Friday, I'm with people that, you know, understand and are interested in, you know, saying with me. Um, Theo, so we wanted to um, talk a little bit about career counseling um, and maybe like internships, things like that. What can students expect from, um, from that department at the University of Florida? Sure, so the Career Connection Center at the University of Florida, basically um, there's staff members, professional staff members whose job is to help students get jobs. And they have different services ranging from, for example, they do resume critiques, cover letter critiques, they have resources on their website. Students can drop um, by and drop off um, to do like an express appointment also um, in terms of getting their resume critique. They also have a career closet um, where students who maybe potentially lack uh, professional outfits can borrow professional outfits, certainly. Um, during the fall and spring semester, there's something called the Career Showcase, which happens in the O'Connell Center. And typically there's hundreds of employers that come out looking to hire students for internships and full-time positions. And they basically break that up over two days. Um, so there's a technical day and a non-technical day. And that's something that I personally recommend that students start attending as early as freshman year. Um, there's some companies that might be looking to hire students that might be uh, maybe younger in their, in their years, um, maybe because they might be able to retain that student for several years in an internship or just getting the experience, I think in general, of just walking around talking to employers is a good experience. But basically the Career Connection Center is a resource as far as being able to give students um, career counseling. So if you have questions, if you're kind of undecided as far as how your major is gonna apply to your career, you can sit down with like a one-on-one -on -one consultation with them. Um, they have a resource online called CHOMP, which is basically um, a career assessment where students can kind of fill out a questionnaire. And based off of how they answer that questionnaire, it will recommend certain majors that the student might want to consider. So if someone's undecided, they can kind of help you with that process as well. And then also academic advisors can be a resource for that as well for students. So you can definitely go to your academic advisors while they may focus on the academic part, many of them can also be excellent career counselors too. Excellent, and, and um, I mean, probably like um, Elena in particular, because you're, you're um, a senior, have you ever gotten an internship through um, through that department or um, been able to access that the, the career center 
Yeah, um, I'm actually working with them right now. I'm applying for graduate school. So I've been working on my statement of purpose and my personal statement. So I've been having someone that's, you know, uh, guiding me through and their resources on their website have been really helpful. Um, with the internships, I was scheduled to do in the summer. It was, it's pending um, due to COVID-19. Um, I didn't find it through UF, um, but they've been really helpful in, you know, guiding me through the process and getting the credit. And um, they've been really helpful because obviously there's been so many changes um, recently, but, and definitely the academic advisors, I've been there so many times, I've changed my major like six times. So they're very helpful. Um, and they're definitely a good resource if you ever are lost or you just need some guidance on classes or majors or anything. So I would definitely suggest using them. Great. Um, I wanna ask about um, academic support and um, one question actually that was asked by um, a participant was, you know, how do you, how do I interact with, with teachers? How do I con you know, connect with them and form a relationship with them? And then also I'd love for the students to address like if you do need academic support, where do you go? Is it peer tutors or your, you know, is there like a, you know, a department where you can go and visit at any time? How does that work? So um, why don't we start with, um, with Ilana? Yeah, so definitely like Elaine and Jake were saying earlier, office hours is a great way to kind of get to know your professors. Like I actually took chem one and two, just general chemistry this past year, and I have the same professor for both semesters. And I actually was able to build a really strong connection with her by going to office hours. And she probably taught over, I don't know, like I want to say 6,000 students, like both semesters, like crazy number, but she still remembered me and everything. So definitely go to office hours. You can get support that way. As well, there's like companies that can help you as well, like tutoring, which isn't technically free, but there are things like Study Edge and Smoke and Notes that are there to help students as well, which you do have to pay for. But there's also if students have, um, like if they need to have like a medical withdrawal, they can go to the, um, like the you matter um, resources we have available, they would just like fill out a form basically and we would kind of help them through that transition. So that's always available. And then also if students have a learning disability or really any kind of mental disability, basically anything that would need support for academics, they can register with the Disability Resource Center. I'm actually registered with them to get extended time for testing. And basically you just, Sit, have like a quick meeting with them and you basically talk about the resources that you would need the support and they just kind of go over the how that will apply and you basically just apply it for like to send that letter that they make to like each professor to get the accommodations. Got it. Jake, how about you? Have you been able to access your professors? Um, yeah. Any kind of you know, I've, I've been to my fair share of office hours and like I said earlier I try to sit in the front of the class uh, in big lectures so that at least the professor can look at my face and I try and say thank you after each class just to, as like a little thing obviously thank your professors but just to get your face out there for the professor. Um, in addition I know the school has different tutoring centers that are free for students to use. I've been a couple of times I just had a quick question about one problem or if I had a general concept question. And like Alana said, uh, there are some not affiliated with the university, but some very helpful off-campus uh, tutoring centers that you can pay monthly for that is, cheaper, that is cheaper than a typical tutor would be for an hour. So definitely there are plenty of resources around campus. Awesome, thank you. Um, I'd love for the students to address, knowing that, uh, that most of the people on this call that are participating are in 10th, 11th, 12th grade. So what um, advice would you give yourself if you could go back and you know, maybe it's like right before senior year, you're entering the college admission process, what advice would you give yourself? Jake, you wanna start? Sure. Um, I would say to really, uh, I guess take advantage of your time in high school because that's a great time for you to just think about what you want to do in the future. But at the same time, don't worry about it too much. Like I said earlier, I'm, I've, I'm still technically an undecided major and then I'm majoring in business, but still doing a pre-med track. It really doesn't matter uh, if you know what you want to do yet. 
Elena said she changed her major like six times. Uh, you'll find your place. Just make sure to have fun while you can, especially your last semester of senior year, but still do well in school because I'm sure UF cares about that and a lot of other schools. Uh, so yeah, just take advantage of your time. Excellent. Ilana? Yeah, so it's kind of similar to Jake, definitely like don't waste your time. Like I definitely strongly focus on academics and I would kind of tell myself maybe to not focus as strongly as I do on that. Um, not that every little grade matters, but also just kind of before, like I kind of had this image that going into college, everything was going to go perfectly, which obviously doesn't happen. So just kind of understanding that there's going to be a transition, but always knowing that there are resources and people available to help you. And if you can't find them, just even asking a professor, even your advisor, anybody on campus would be happy to help you. Excellent. Thank you. Um, all right, let's talk a little bit about the city of Gainesville. A question came in, what's the city like? What kinds of you know stuff do you do there? Um, and I think this could be part of even a larger question of like, what does your weekend look like? Like, you know, like your typical Saturday. Um, you want to go ahead and, and get us started, Ilana? Sure. So I would say a Saturday is probably revolving around game day um, in the fall, um, depending on when the game is. Um, but there's a the city of Gainesville just I mean, there's basically it's a college town. So everything kind of is centered around the university. It's basically you have the on campus and then you have right off of campus, you have like Midtown, and then if you go off of campus, there's downtown and also just like the city of Gainesville as well, where you basically like, there's a bunch of stuff to do. Like you don't really run out, I guess, of options. Like you can always find something. We even have a, um, what is the lake called? I can't even think, Lake, not Lake Alice. The, um, I, oh my God, I can't think of the name right now, but there's like a lake um, right off of campus. And it's basically like this outdoor place where there's ribs courses and stuff. Um, yeah, Lake Walbury, thank you. Um, I don't know why that just completely blanked my memory, but um, there's basically always something for people to do. Awesome. Elena, you wanna chime in? Yeah, sure. Um, like Alana said, you know, Saturdays uh, in the fall, you, you're not really doing anything besides game day. Um, and then Sundays are kind of, you know, homework, get yourself right, do everything you need to do. Um, during the spring, you know, there's so much stuff to do in Gainesville. Like I didn't have my car freshman and sophomore year um, and everything's in walking distance that you could really need. But once you do have a car, you have a friend of the car. Um, like Alana said, there's downtown, there's things in the surrounding counties. Um, there's always things to do. Um, I personally, I like to eat out. So I like to go and go to the restaurants and, you know, um, hang out with my friends. The best thing I think about Florida is the weather. So it's always nice out. Um, you can always just go lay outside. There's so many places to go and like hang your hammocks up, just go and lay in tan, um, you know, play basketball, football, go on walks, like, especially during um, the pandemic. That's what I did a lot was going on a lot of walks. Um, there's a lot of parks and stuff. So there's always something to do. And even if there's not like something, you know, um, off campus going on like usually there's something on campus like clubs organizations whatever you're involved in and even if you're not a member you can always get involved in those things that they put on um so there's always something you're never bored okay and um maybe jake you can talk a little bit about the balance in your life of how do you balance the social and the academic and um how has that sort of gone for you your first year at uf yeah, for sure. Um, so I definitely tried during the day. Uh, obviously, you walk out of your room and there's infinitely many things to do. There are people that you can hang out with, there are activities on campus, whatever you want. But if you get yourself on a schedule, I always try and go to the library uh, during the day. So that way, my nights can be spent with my friends and hanging out and uh, stuff like that. And same with the weekends. Obviously, if there's a game on campus uh, in the fall or even with a basketball game or any other type of sport game that I went to everything. Uh, you definitely try and uh, balance your weekends between going to stuff and also taking time for yourself to wake up early if you need to do some work or even late night. Uh, and one more thing I want to mention um, is intramural sports on the weekends. They they run throughout. I played most all sports that were offered this semester. It was really fun. Uh, 
and that's on the weekends and the week. But the coolest thing that I got to do was my uh, AE Pi flag football team made it to the championship and we got to play in the swamp on the field, which was really cool. And uh, there's just so many things to do in Gainesville. Like what, what is Gainesville not like is the real question. So. Awesome. Um, so why don't we take uh, just like, you know, a few seconds, each of you to, you know, give your parting words to our participants. Um, Theos, why don't we start with you? Sure, just wanna uh, thank you all for taking the time to, to come to this call to learn more about the University of Florida. Um, you know, wanna thank JumpSpark for being able to host this and inviting us. Um, really the main advice that I would give to high school students or middle school students or whatever age we have, it's probably a spectrum. Definitely do your research about colleges. If you do have the ability to, to actually visit campus, I think that's gonna be a great opportunity to really see kind of the feel and vibe for it. Um, but, but really there's, there's kind of a little bit of everything at the University of Florida. And, and I think you've heard that from the students. So regardless of what major you're looking for, if you're looking for something in the arts, we have that. If you're looking for engineering, we have 16 engineering majors. If you're a pre-professional, uh, pre-med, for example, there's Shans literally on campus where you can volunteer and actually shadow a physician. Um, so definitely I'd say do your research on colleges early, apply to colleges early your senior year, take the most rigorous classes available and try to get eight hours of sleep. Thank you, Theos, excellent. Um, Maria? Hi everyone, thank you again for joining us. We're really excited to eventually see you on campus. Um, the best advice I can give is try everything, even if you think it's weird, even if you think you won't know anyone there, just come give it a shot. You have no idea who you'll meet or how you'll get connected to something else. Great advice. Rabbi Jonah? Well, I'm thrilled to be here as well. And I think for, for new students coming to campus, whether it's the University of Florida or wherever you go and are looking to engage in Jewish life, uh, Jewish life, like so many things, is what you make it. Um, and taking risks and being willing to go outside your comfort zone is going to enable you to have the most um, meaningful experience you know, during your time on campus, particularly when it comes to Jewish life. Um, so I, I, I view sort of the Jewish life on campus as sort of being... Um, you know, a great place to play and explore and experience different things. So I hope that you'll do that uh, in all in all areas that the campus has to offer, wherever wherever it is that you may go. Thank you, Jake. Last last words. Yeah, uh, I I could talk about UF for an unlimited amount of time. I love Florida. I think it's the best school in the country. It, there are so many opportunities, and if you're ever on campus. Uh, I'm sure you can contact Jump Spark and get my information. I'd be more than happy to talk to you or walk you around campus. Uh, go Gators. Awesome. Elena. Yeah, I just want to say thank you for listening and for also for having me. Um, I just want to say that UF has definitely been one of the greatest decisions going there. Um, I love the campus. I love memories. Like Jake said, I could literally talk about it forever. And thank you for allowing me to, you know, look back on my Four years um, and like Jake said I'm sure you can get my information if you have any questions about my majors or you know anything um, yeah so thank you awesome Ilana yeah thank you guys for having me and taking the time to listen to all of us talk um, like Elaine and Jake said I'm sure you guys can get my information if you ever want to talk to me or anything um, but definitely UF has definitely probably been one of the greatest decisions I've ever made. It literally has anything you could ever want in a campus and the experience as a whole. So just really make the most of your time when you're there. Fantastic. I wanna thank all of our awesome presenters today. You did an incredible job. I wanna thank all the teens and the parents who've joined us coming up this week. Uh, tomorrow, Thursday, June 11th at five, we have our info session featuring Elon. On Friday, June 12th, we have a lunchtime info session at one o'clock featuring the University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill. And then on Sunday, June 14th at five will be our info session featuring the University of Georgia. And you can register for all these sessions at roadtriptocollege.org and follow us on social media at JumpSparkATL. We will be sending you a follow-up email with all the email addresses of all the presenters today, as well as a virtual tour of the University of Florida and um, some other goodies. And please take a moment to give us feedback when prompted at the end of this session. Thank you guys so much. And we will see you next time. Go Gators.